Okay, let's face it. If you're hosting anything on Zoom, you probably had the moment where you went, ah, I wish I could just pop up a quick timer on my screen like this to let my participants know when it's time to switch when we're doing introductions, just to make sure that everybody has an equal time to share. Um, when you're doing journaling activities and you want people to write something down and you want to give them a specific time, or if you're doing competitive games, all of these things require a countdown timer and sometimes it's not as easy, but it's essential to know where to find one when you need it. So in this video today, I will show you five different ways to add countdown timers to your Zoom meetings. Some of them will be super easy and you probably haven't even thought of them, and but they're really easy. You don't need to know any big tech and then others are really customizable and really powerful. So we're going to start with the easiest one, a phone timer. And what I mean by that is literally this thing, a phone that most of you have in your pockets and you might have one of these uh, timer apps that you can literally just pop up a time, hit start, and you could just hold that up to the camera. A little hat tip to my friend Blake Fly who does this often, and it works really well. Plus, as you can hear, if you do have the sound enabled on these, it actually plays a sound as well, and I kind of like the design of the circle moving that way. So it's a little bit more visual, not just the numbers. Um, you can adjust this on the fly. If you need extra time, there is a button to add an extra minute. So really, really easy, but maybe not for everyone. So let's talk about the second timer, which is through the Zoom apps. And for this, Let's quickly jump into my little Zoom uh, window over here. I've actually done a full tutorial on the Zoom Apps Timer, which I will link above here. But uh, the quick way to find it, if you have the Zoom Apps installed, you just need to open it up here. Oh, and it's already open. So this is how it looks like. So I'll show you first how it looks like and then how to find it. But I can quickly adjust the time that I want to spend. I click start uh, right now. This timer only shows up for myself. So my participants don't see it. For them to see it, I need to share the app screen. So if I click this button, um, in this case, I'm gonna choose no audio. If you choose computer audio, they will also hear a sound. And then uh, this is what your participants will see as a shared screen. Again, I did a full video on that, how that looks like um, up here. The tricky thing with this timer is, and the problem that a lot of you have mentioned in the comments, is that um, when you are sharing your screen, you're sharing your slides, and you want to also add a timer, you can't do that because you can only share one screen at a time. Or if you're running, for example, a Toastmasters meeting or any meeting where there's other people who are presenting and you wanna add a timer just to keep them on track and make sure that they wrap up on time. There's no way to do that because we can't share two screens at the same time. So it's easy, it works well, but it might not be for everyone. So let's check out this third one, and I'm actually really excited about that one. Um, this is the Blue Sky Apps uh, meeting timer. It's actually, uh, let me share this, a timer for Zoom that automatically joins your meetings or you can invite them. Uh, I'm actually gonna invite this timer right now in the meantime, so I just need to plug in my uh, meeting ID in here again. Let me change this view so you don't see that. And I'll show you how it's how it works. So you invite the timer to your meeting as a participant, then they will become a regular window, a, a regular video, uh, like a participant that you then can control and the, it has its own control center. 
So let's have a look at how does this look like in Zoom when you invite the timer. Okay, so I can see Blue Sky Timer entered the waiting room. Let's admit them. And we can see right now, it just shows this little banner. There is a chat message that invites me to go to the um, control center. And I already have that open over here. So let's have a look at the control center. So here I can change my settings. I can um, do it, make it a countdown. I can make it a count up, like starting from zero and do it more like a stopwatch. Um, here I can change the time that I want. So let's just put it for 10 seconds for now so we can see it. There's a warning time where it changes color. Let's actually make it, let's make this 20 seconds and let's make the warning time 10 seconds. And let's also add a sound. And then you can add an additional alert time which we will just do at the end. You can change the volume. Uh, if you should count past zero, in this case, I want it to stop at zero. So now that I have checked all of these settings, and this is what the host would see as you're doing this, um, your participants would still just see this uh, kind of screensaver image. Once I click start in here, the time starts ticking down, and this is what participants see. So as you can see, it just shows up as a separate participant with the window. Ah, that was our first sound. I don't know if you heard that. And then we should get our other sound just when it goes to zero. There we go. So the cool thing is with this, if somebody else is sharing their screen, you could still show the timer and if they're in gallery view or if they want to pin the timer to their own screen, they could keep an eye on the time and therefore not get distracted. Um, and that is the Blue Sky Timer. The cool thing about this app is, oh, uh, yeah, let's stop this, um, that they have a couple of other features like an attendance tracker. Like if you click this button, it will just write down who are all the uh, people that have attended your Zoom meeting, really useful sometimes. Also participation tracker. I'm not gonna go into the details. The only thing that I want to share is, unfortunately, this is not a free app like the first two that I shared with you. Um, it does have a one week trial that I'm currently trying out. And then you can upgrade, and these are the pricing options. So if you only need it for two Zoom meetings per month, that are not longer than 60 minutes and you're okay with having their branding on it, you could still use this for free. Um, and then if you want it for more professional hobby, professional enterprise versions, you can upgrade to a monthly fee. And this is where you see all the different things that uh, you get with that. So this was the third timer moving on to the fourth time, actually, no, there's one more thing that I wanted to share about this um, as I'm still playing around with this. Um, there are simple timers. There's an agenda timer, which is also kind of neat. So you can almost, you can build your own agenda. Like it's, you can see here, 15 minute presentation, 10 minute panel discussion, five minute Q and A, uh, and it will create this. So if I click start on this, connecting, it will show the meeting agenda in here, which is kind of neat. Um, and then the third thing they have is just a clock. So it's, if you literally just wanted to have the time showing up in your Zoom meetings as a participant, that's how you do that. So I think they thought about some really interesting use cases with their timer. Um, you can change the design a little bit. Uh, you can change the, some settings. There even was a way to do different templates. So if you're using the same type of timer often, you could use that. Uh, after all, I think if you are needing a timer many times, this might be worth looking into investing. Um, all right. The fourth timer is called 
clock. And I first got introduced to that um, by Julian Peters, who actually created this because he realized that he really wanted to have this remote timer, uh, this share timer for remote teams. Because one thing that none of the examples that I've shared so far do is if your participants are in a breakout room and you want them to keep track of the time and not just the time on the top, like you want to add an additional couple minutes, something like that, then you are quite limited because all of the other ones, you share your screen. You can now share your screen to breakout rooms. I made a video about that here. Um, but if participants also need to share their screen because they're working on collaborative documents on uh, like a Google Sheet or a Miro or a mural board, then you can't also share the timer. So he created this and uh, I'll show you how it looks like. It's basically a browser and I could, uh, this is kind of the how to, right? So basically this is a browser page and I can just type in the, the time that I want to put and then I just click start timer. And I could share this as a screen with my participants. I probably would adjust the size a little bit. So this is kind of what I'm sharing in Zoom and they can just see the timer ticking down. I can add one minute easily. And then if I wanted each participant in the breakout rooms to also see it, I can click this button on the top that says share timer and it will copy a URL where they can literally just see the timer and nothing else. And if I add a couple of minutes here, it will automatically update that for all the participants. Um, so it's a really easy tool that doesn't have a lot of options, but if you are in that situation where you want participants to have their own personal um, timer, then this might be a really cool option. Like I'm thinking also, again, you might have a couple of different speakers and you want them to just be able to see their time that they have left, but none of the other participants should see it. In that case, I would share the timer with just them. I would share the link with them, maybe even ahead of time. So once they start their talk, I will start the timer. They can see it ticking down. They know how much time they have left before we move on to the next speaker or the next uh, part in, let's say, a conference. So uh, that is timer number four. I have one timer left. This fifth timer is one that is actually my favorite because I use it all the time. Um, it is the timer through Ecamm Live, which is a really powerful live streaming platform um, that you can check out. I will also link to the blog post where they talk about different countdown timers and there's a bunch of examples. Um, but to show you what it looks like, and I showed this at the very beginning, I basically programmed a bunch of different timers that I can just enable by hitting a button on my stream deck. So I have a two minute timer, I got a eight minute timer, there's 10 minutes. And the cool thing is I can move them around. I can move them to a different place. I could make them larger. I can change the colors. I can change the fonts. It's really customizable to anything that works for my brand. And sometimes I just want to have a really big timer and don't see myself. Hang on, let me actually take this one out again. Sometimes I want to add some animated GIFs to it and backgrounds or even at the beginning of my YouTube video, if you showed up live, you might have seen. So there's lots of different options that you can use the timers in Ecamm with. And if you do have a stream deck, which currently my cable is not long enough, but it's this device with all these buttons that you can program, then you can program your timers on there and it literally just takes one second to add one of the timers to your screen. And there's lots of other things that Ecamm does. Again, I'm going to link to another video where I talked about all the ways I use it in my virtual facilitation and Zoom meetings. Uh, so you can check that out. There also is a link if you're thinking of trying that out that you can 
uh, use. And if you are not on a Mac, because Ecamm Live is a Mac only software, then I highly recommend checking out OBS Studio, which is kind of the equivalent. It's also live streaming software. It's not as user friendly, but it gives you a lot of options, especially when it comes to timers as well. So um, we're coming to the end of this video. Which timer do you like best? Which one are you going to start using in your Zoom meetings? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video and I wanna get more Zoom tips, virtual facilitation tips, learning how to really bring people together and create more human moments, more magical human moments online, then make sure you subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.